Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I finally received some parts from China, um, which were listed as new parts. Turns out, actually they're not new parts. So if you look at them, sorry about the lighting, it's not great just over here. Right, but you can see the legs are cut off, sold on the legs already. Um, some of the parts are quite corroded, I've seen quite a bad one here before. Back of the parts were corroded and like, these are used parts, these are not new parts, they're old ones. So they've been pulled out of something, which, okay, I don't have a problem with recycling, that's fine. But they were sold as new parts, so now I've got to do, I've got to go through and test every single one to make sure what I've actually received work. So I thought I'd just show you that, really, All right? Unfortunately I've got these bloody lights reflecting on the scope screen there, but I've got this set to DC coupling. And um, actually, I might turn those lights off, it's going to be in the way. Right, there you go, that's all you really need to see is the screen anyway. So, I've got myself a little test jig here on my, on my breadboard, just for a bunch of interconnects. All I've got to do is I've got these cables here with the female header pins on it, which you probably can't see very well. And all I'm doing is plugging those into the leads of the devices. So, I've already tested three devices and they checked out okay. All I'm really checking for is the um, output voltage and in fact the reset line triggers. So this is monitoring the reset line, this is monitoring the output voltage. And I've got my power supply set to 7 volts, so it's just a little bit above the um, 5 volt level. Um, and these are basically, so these are LM2725, uh, oh, sorry, LM2925T. Now I put, purchased these for my Agilent power supply because that uses a obsolete part which you can no longer get. These are also obsolete parts, which is why I was actually surprised to see new ones. Yeah, I thought they were Chinese knockoffs or something. But it turns out, no, they're not. They're, they're pulled parts. They've, they've been pulled out of it to gear. So I'll hook this up and I'll show you the test results I'm getting. And I'll show you how I'm testing these things. This is something maybe handy for someone that even needs to uh, just do ver verification. If you've got lots of parts to check, just do this. I mean, I would probably just put this straight into the breadboard, but the pinout spacing doesn't match the breadboard. That's why I've had to use this interconnect um, wire system instead in order to do the same thing. Okay, um, doesn't want to go on very well. Here we go, it's in. So I have to watch the voltage, watch for that changing. You should see the voltage first, then it will change about a second or so later. I've got quite a large capacitor on there to give a good delay time. So that's on, voltage is up, you should see that change. There we go, that's gone high. Alright, so that part works. Okay, no problem. And then we do the next one. So I purchased 10 of these. Well, actually, I've got 15 on the way from different suppliers. I purchased from lots of different places because I didn't want to mess around trying to wait for them to turn up or whatever. And it turns out two of them are from the same person because the packaging was identical. And it's even got the same name on the package, even though it came from different stores. So obviously, they're running different stores at the same time. And, you know, I don't know why I do that, but anyway. So we check the next one. 5 volts, gone high. All right. So um, what I've basically got on this breadboard here is um, a 1K resistor and a 10 UF capacitor on the output of the regulator because this, this is a regulator and supervisor IC. I should explain a bit more about what I'm doing. So it needs a bit of loading on the regulator to make sure it's stable. You need a little bit of that and smoothing. And then I've got a 1 UF tantalum capacitor on the delay line, which, which is what sets how long it takes for the, the reset line to reset. Try this one. 5 volts. Reset. Oh, So, so far, so good. I haven't actually had any bad ones yet. Each, each one I've tested so far has worked. So that's a good thing, I suppose. But the fact that there were used parts sold as new. I mean, if it, if it said used parts, that's fine. I would have accepted that because... You can't get them new, <laughs> right? So, um, but the fact that it claimed new, well, yeah, that, was, that was quite annoying. It's got a bit of a loose connection there, might not work very well. Let's see how it goes. 5 volts, or well, 4.9, this one's a bit lower. And the reset line did work, I think. Didn't watch. Yep, that's fine. This one's sitting a little bit lower in voltage. I don't care about the voltage in this particular application. Um, because all I'm actually losing on this device in the Agilent power supply is the reset line. 
So that's all that actually matters. Um, so let's, I'll show you this testing process and just, it's not particularly exciting. I might just see in the first couple of weeks, like, oh, it's not that interesting, but um, almost finished. I might as well finish what I'm doing. Next one, let's see if we get a failure. Five volts, reset line. So that's all good. Um, so I, I don't have a problem with recycled parts. I think it's actually really good they're pulling parts and recycling them instead of throwing them in the bin, all right? Because I mean, uh, things like this are obtainable instead of not obtainable. You know, before, if I if I couldn't get these as, as used parts, um, then I couldn't have got them, all right? So it's pretty simple, really. It wouldn't have, though, this wouldn't have been around. So the fact that you could get them at all is, is brilliant. So don't get me wrong about that, but what I do, rather, what I do, mind is people making false claims on this on their listings and stuff. So, but anyway, no. five volts, reset line, cool. We're good. So that means I can actually put one of these in the engine on power supply. I need one more to test, and I'll put you out your misery and stop. Um, so yeah, the engine on power supply, the part in there was a I've forgotten. U139 was the part number, or the um, designator for the part. U139. I forgot what the part was now. Anyway, it's, it's unobtainable, no longer made. I couldn't even find any other obscure sources either. No one had them. For about 9 volts, reset line. So, yeah, I mean, certain regulator output's a bit wonky, you know, they're a bit low and stuff like that, but yeah, doesn't matter. What I'm doing doesn't matter. So, I've got heaps of these now. Um, I'm probably never going to use them all, <laughs> but yeah, so they came in all little plastic bags like this, and yeah, anyway, cool. So I've got five more coming, so I'm going to leave my test board here intact. All I've got is a power supply coming in, obviously, and just those five lines, so I'll, um, I'll leave that in intact. So when I've got the other five turn up, I'll do the same testing on them, but um, yeah, I mean, the supply going to these devices is about... I think it was about 14 volts, 16 volts, was it 16 volts coming into the devices? So 7 volts is, is way below what it's going to be receiving, so it's definitely going to be turning on, that's fine. So, all good. I'll show you that board, I suppose, give you a close-up on that. Yeah, so I've got my handy needle probes plugged into that point there, which is the output. And it's just a bit of a mess, it's all it's just doing is interconnects. All right, so... Um, Right, so resistor capacitor across the output and a tantalum just there, nothing particularly exciting. But yeah. Just annoyed at the fact that these are new parts, not 